JP Morosi is an accredited voter in the process. He joins us leading the league in information. Let's circle back to the Yankees with you to kick things off, JP, this morning. Uh, we talked about some of the additions, Carlos Radon and company. Among the incumbents, DJ LeMahieu, who uh, could be looking at a more versatile role than ever if there could be such a thing for him this year. Good morning, Matt and Ron and DJ LeMahieu. The excitement surrounding his return to health in 2023 will be one of the key stories of this Yankees spring training and some very encouraging signs early on. Dan Martin writing in the New York Post recently uh, based on a conversation that Dan had with Yankees hitting coach Dylan Lawson saying that DJ right now looks as though there was no foot issue at all. Of course we know well that late last season the foot issue and, and injury was hampering DJ's ability to to perform. They tried to get him ready for the playoffs. It didn't work out. And here are his defensive splits going back the last two seasons at second at third and at first of course we would expect based on Rizzo's return that first base not really a need the second base conversation is interesting of course they just settled with Glaber Torres in salary arbitration I could see LeMahieu splitting his time between second and third depending on the situation there do they end up moving Labor Torres at some point in spring training uh, at third base. We, we know well the struggles of Josh Donaldson at third base last year, especially during the postseason, his struggles against the Houston Astros in the American League Championship Series. For me, I, I think it, it looked as though in the in the playoffs, Matt and Ron, that that the gap between the Yankees and Astros was huge. But we have to remember that, that DJ has been an MVP caliber player ever since arriving to the Bronx and they just simply did not have him during the course of the postseason. It could be a very different story this year if DJ LeMahieu is healthy. How about some ifs ands and uh, maybe not buts but some ifs for another team and that's the rotation of the Minnesota Twins. We know that with the addition of Pablo Lopez they've gotten better. Sonny Gray returns. Joe Ryan after kind of a breakthrough season returns. And the guy we've kind of forgotten about is somebody coming off of Tommy John surgery. What exactly then are the expectations for Kenta Maeda? Matt, that, that's an excellent question. I think right now the Twins are expecting he is going to be without limitations as a starting pitcher in spring training. That's excellent news right now for the Minnesota Twins. Recall, of course, they also have Chris Paddock, a sign of that multi-year deal coming off of his Tommy John surgery. So the Twins are trying to really uh, have different layers of pitching when you talk about their starting rotation. And, and I think Maeda really is a prominent member of this rotation. They've got certainly over as well as been part of the mix there the last uh, year or so too. So I, I like the Twins starting pitching depth. Uh, of course, they were able to bring back Carlos Correa. Uh, and, and you compare this roster to the White Sox and the Guardians. I, I'm on record as saying I like the White Sox chances to win the division, uh, especially if they just have a good, healthy year there in Chicago. But with Maeda, uh, he has been someone that's been a mainstay, for, first, of course, for the Dodgers and now for the Minnesota Twins. And when you consider his health returning for, for Minnesota this year, they expect him to be there day one of spring training, something of a normal spring training progression for Kenta Maeda, a very valuable member of that staff and likely to be as a starting pitcher joining the ranks of Lopez and Ryan there in Minnesota. JP, is there any chance with Maeda, because he's coming back from injury, that they'll ease him in, maybe in a relief role? He, he did a lot of good work for the Dodgers in the postseason in that role. They could do that, Ron, and I think that they'll be pretty, pretty creative with respect to how they manage his innings, maybe around the middle part of the season. They could, of course, back off, back off him a bit during the during the middle part of the year in July. Maybe, maybe have him uh, go into a relief role or a bulk role at that point in time. But the general thought, I think, for the, for the Twins is get him stretched out in spring training, and if they want to sort of taper his work towards the second half, as we saw the Dodgers do very effectively, where he was a, a, a bulk guy out of the bullpen in the playoffs. Should the Twins be fortunate enough to make the playoffs in 2023, maybe that ultimately is the role that Maeda has. He could be a, one of those dynamic forces out of the bullpen in October, uh, maybe even late September. But I think the plan is right now to have him start and then potentially taper him as, as you get deeper into the season because they do expect to have some of their younger talent coming in and be able to start games with them, Ron, 
during the course of the second half of the year and into the playoffs. So this is, I think, really a team when we know Derek Falvey, how, how much he was known for his ability to develop pitching with Cleveland. It's been the same story now since coming over to Minnesota, and they expect to have a very, very strong rotation plus with some depth there in the into the minor leagues as they enter the second half. Hey, can you guys put that uh, Maeda full screen back up there? We got that full screen built. We got that full screen built. This might be uh, the actual moment where he blew out. Look, I mean, look at the look on his face. I love history. Yeah, I mean, I love history too, but that's uh, that's an interesting reaction. It, it's hard to throw 95. You know that, right? <laughs> that's what it looks like. I do know that. <laughs> uh, when he comes back, though, it'll be like they have kind of a new player on the roster. The twins have a new explosive weapon. New explosive weapon, says Scott Forrest. Uh, let's uh, let's <laughs> get you on to something else we learned of yesterday. And this doesn't come as a great shock because there was conversation that Zach Greinke would, in fact, return for a 42nd year in Major League Baseball if this is <laughs> close to what he's doing. Yeah, he's back. Uh, a one-year deal, and, and uh, the Royals are thrilled to have him back in the fold. They are uh, reportedly agreeing to that one-year deal with the Royals. To your point, it's been uh, something that we've expected to see happen in, in recent days as, as we were tracking the news in the last remaining free agents. The Royals, of course, with first-year manager Matt Cattuaro, uh looking to compete a, a little bit more in the American League Central this year. And, and the Royals just really enjoyed having Zach's presence in that organization and around their young pitching, think about Singer, and of course Singer will likely uh, be there with uh, D. Rowe and Team USA in, in uh, during the World Baseball Classic. I love this, 19 major league seasons. Uh, we just got done, of course, last, last week at this time, we were at the Hall of Fame getting ready for the election. I believe, guys, as we talk about Zach Greinke and, and the resume that he's built, that when the time comes, years from now, I expect to vote for Zach Greinke for the Hall of Fame. There's enough of a peak. You see it there in 2009, best pitcher in the world, and six all-star selections, more, more than 3,000 innings with an ERA there of 3.42. I think as that win total moves higher and higher, I believe as a voter that we're going to start to look, and maybe I'll send it back to Ron on this note, we're going to start to look at 200 wins as being something closer to what 300 used to represent. And even if you get up to around... 220, 230, that to me is rarefied air in the modern game, and Zach Greinke is there. Well, I think you're right, JP. 82 games over 500 with those 223 wins, over 500 starts, over 3,000 innings pitched, 118 strikeouts from 3,000. I mean, what else has he yeah. not done? Does he get to 118 strikeouts this year? You know, last year he had 73 in about 140, 150 innings. So the strikeouts have dried up, but maybe a, a, a magical finish. I think he's the kind of guy that's capable of, if he thinks that he needs to be a strikeout guy, he would just pivot into becoming that once again. This that's, is a high-end all-star pitcher. Yes, it is, Harold. It is. Thanks for uh, chiming in on that. And uh, JP, thanks for, uh, for that as well.